Hey there, hi there, ho there. It's Shane T, and uh, it's, uh, I don't know what day it is, I think it's Tuesday, and uh, I thought, I've seen all these unboxing videos going on on the internet, uh, different websites and such, and I thought, you know what, Let me. that looks like fun, let me try and do an unboxing video. So I'm going to do, or attempt to do, an unboxing video. Uh, most guys record them, uh, pre-record them, and then edit them together. And uh, number one, I don't have the time to edit it. And number two, can't be real if it's not live, right? So uh, I thought uh, we'll give it a shot today. And what I'm unboxing is a pair of uh, Ballinger Motorsports um, AFR, I think they're called 500, uh, landometers and sensors. So without further ado, yay, here's the box. Just to prove it's a real box, here it is. We will... Uh, cut this guy open. So uh, the way this came about was, if you remember a couple weeks ago, I did a, I'm, I'm still in the middle of, but I'm, I did a video from uh, the, sh the shop where we had a uh, Harley Davidson that's going to run nitromethane. And obviously it's a two cylinder and we have uh, two cylinders worth of Lambda data to look at. But with the ECU we had in it, Motec M400, uh, we can only measure one, one Lambda at a time. So I actually uh, was contacted by my buddy James uh, from Ballinger Motorsports, and uh, we talked a little bit about his new AFR 500, which can transmit over the CAN bus. So uh, Motec has a device called an LTC or an LTCD that can read uh, either one or two Lambda sensors and transmit over the CAN bus. But since I don't have any, and owing to the fact that we're going to run 70% nitromethane and we're going to go towards the rich end of the air fuel ratio scale, uh, James said that he has a product that will read down to 0.41 lambda. Uh, so that the, the fact that it'll read that rich uh, is potentially beneficial because I, I don't exactly know where we're going to have to run this engine on the dyno. And having the ability to have two lambda meters, one for each cylinder, and gather that data on each dyno pull instead of having to tune the engine, uh, tune one cylinder, move the lambda sensor. On top of that, I was using a Bosch LSU 4.9 sensor, which is not intended to read any richer than uh, 0.65 lambda. Uh, but with, anyway, without further ado, let's open the box and we'll get a little bit more technical here in a minute. So obviously we have our packing slip and assorted uh, Paraphernalia. Every every kid loves these. It's it's bubble wrap. Woo! I can't wait to give these to Bella. Okay, and here we are. It was the first one. I have two units, I think, in here. Yes. So this is. Oh, what do we get? What else is this? Okay, I have a pair of Lambda protection um, bungs and some gaskets. So we've got a couple of copper gaskets, and then these protection bungs here that are meant to thread into the uh, existing lambda sensor opening on the exhaust. You can see that they have like a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a relief here in the side of this that acts like a heat sink to try and take heat away from the sensor. So the sensor itself uh, is a piece of ceramic inside the the actual uh, air fuel ratio sensor, the lambda sensor. And that ceramic is is uh, a very brittle as you can imagine because it's thin uh, and it's sensitive to both temperature, shock, and also to liquid. Liquid really screws them up, which is why you don't typically run a Lambda sensor uh, before you've run the engine and dried the exhaust out. But anyway, so this, this bung is designed to uh, reduce the amount of exhaust flow that crosses the tip of the sensor. Now, obviously the problem with that would then be that we would have a reduced signal or a latency, let's say, to the Lambda sensor but it also will protect our sensor from damage due to heat, uh, moisture, uh, and shock. So this guy threads right into the existing thread of the lambda uh, bung on the exhaust pipe, wherever it is, and then the sensor would thread into the top side here. And then this sensing port here, you notice the bottom, it just has a little bit of a hole here in the bottom, and this sensing port would let it sample some uh, exhaust gas through this little port, but also protect, again, the sensor and the delicate elements inside the sensor from vapor, shock, and or potentially temperature. We don't exactly know what the exhaust temperature is going to be on 70% nitromethane, but it's conceivable that it could be hot, hot enough that the sensor could overheat. Typically, those sensors will run in the, 
I don't know, 1,000 degree range, uh, 1,300 degree range. So it's also not uncommon with a high exhaust flow, like say on methanol, where you have an exhaust temperature that's say 1,200 degrees, which seems hot. Uh, but if you're a lambda sensor heating element that wants to be 1,000 degrees centigrade, then uh, 1,250 Fahrenheit is actually cold. It's like putting air conditioning across the sensor, which can also make the readings go off. So that's what that protection device is all about. And now we unbox the AFR 500 CAN module. Um, so this guy is uh, based on the old NGK Powerdex and uh, Ballinger has these produced now. So here's the actual uh, air fuel ratio monitoring unit. It has this display on it which will light up with uh, red LEDs and tell you, you can program it to be air fuel ratio depending on your fuel type or lambda. And then uh, this six pin DTM is, uh, is, is a connection I think to the CAN bus. I haven't looked at the, the paperwork on it so I don't exactly know what I'm looking at here. Uh, and then we have the standard sort of 12 pin connector, which is your power ground. It also has a variable voltage output, zero to five volts. These things have been around for a long time, but Ballinger has taken up the cause of making them uh, new and improved and available to everybody and also the ability to read uh, different kinds of sensors. So it comes with this uh, six foot harness. I think you can order it with different harness lengths. Obviously connector there for the uh, NTK Uego Lambda sensor and a fuse holder here and 12 volts and ground connection connection to the unit. Uh, we have, it looks like, looks like we have maybe an adapter from the six pin Deutsch to probably CAN bus. That'd be CAN high and CAN low. And then this takes assumably CAN high, CAN low out of the AFR meter and broadcasts it over the CAN bus. So they have templates available for multiple different kinds of uh, ECUs. Uh, and they uh, also allow you to change that programming dependent on uh, the type of ECU you're using. So in other words, this thing will plug into the existing CAN bus. It will mimic the output of the MoTeC LTC, Lambda to CAN module. So I don't have to do a bunch of programming on my end. I basically have to program this side so that it outputs in MoTeC mode, tie the CAN bus in, and that becomes my LTC. And again, we could use the uh, MoTeC LTC for this job also, but because this thing could potentially go down to 0.41 Lambda, uh, we want to use this this AFR meter that can read that rich uh, and also the reason why it's able to read that rich is because we're using a specific sensor but uh, uh, some of those are, are a little bit uh, inferior when it comes to measuring wide band air fuel ratio and the reason is inside of a wide band sensor and by the way there are many videos on the internet that will probably explain this better than I can, so I'm not gonna go into too much technical detail, but effectively a wideband lambda sensor is two O2 sensors stacked on top of each other. Okay, so you have a sensing element here in the exhaust, and then you have what would normally be the reference chamber hooked to atmosphere that measures the difference between the exhaust oxygen and the oxygen in the atmosphere. And, and a normal oxygen sensor, uh, the voltage would increase as the difference across the sensor is great. So in other words, in a rich mixture when there's not much oxygen left over or no oxygen left over, the output from the sensor would tend to go high. Uh, when it's a lean mixture and the difference between the exhaust oxygen content and the atmosphere is similar, the voltage output is low. Well, it turns out if you send current backwards across the sensor, you can actually turn the sensor into an oxygen pump. So you can send current to the sensor and pump oxygen one direction or reverse polarity and suck oxygen through the sensor. Probably not exactly technically accurate, but reasonable to uh, explain on Facebook in a live video in 10 minutes. Uh, so the bottom line is you have two sensors here. There's a reference chamber in the middle. You have a sort of uh, atmospheric reference on the tip of the sensor where the wires come out, which is also why it's important not to put a boot over the top of this and seal it. Uh, to the wires. Uh, and then you have the sensing element in the exhaust. And effectively what happens is the sensor controller looks at how difficult it is uh, to hold lambda one inside the reference chamber based on the exhaust content here and atmospheric content here. This is also why pressure affects the lambda reading. As you increase the pressure across the sensor, you have a further migration through the sensor that makes it bias one direction or the other depending on whether you're rich or lean from lambda one. Anyway, 
So the, the deal is that the amount of current that it takes to hold lambda 1 in the reference chamber when uh, it's got a rich mixture over here and atmosphere over here is, is uh, directly re relative to the actual air fuel ratio in the exhaust or the amount of oxygen left over in the exhaust or the lack of it. Uh, and so by measuring the current that it takes both in either a positive current flow direction or a negative current flow direction, you can establish what the air fuel ratio is. Now, the problem comes into play uh, based on the amount of current that it takes to establish lambda one in this reference chamber. If it's a super, super rich mixture, it's possible that the lambda sensor itself, because of its design and because it's not meant to measure super wide air fuel ratio ranges, is not able to allow enough current to pump properly and maintain lambda one in the reference chamber. And so because of that fact, you end up with a sensor that can only read to a certain rich mixture point. Now, the BMS uh, AFR 500 and specifically this sensor, uh, there are there are two types of sensors that can do this job, and one of them is a laboratory grade sensor. They're about seven hundred fifty dollars a piece. They would be used by say an OEM manufacturer who is absolutely trying to calculate the precise amount of oxygen left over in the exhaust, uh, and or by someone in motorsport who wants to have a super accurate sensor. This is the uh, I think professional grade sensor that they sell, and this sensor is effectively the same as far as the current goes, but it's not laboratory grade, which means you don't pay the extra couple hundred dollars per sensor to be able to have this kind of uh, a range that it can measure. So it's, its current measuring range is greater than the standard NTK Uego that you get for 150 bucks off the internet from Amazon or wherever you buy the cheap ones from. So the good ones can measure a wider air fuel ratio range because their current capability is greater. So uh, this sensor is meant to go all the way to 0.41 lambda and be accurate. There's a big difference also between accurate and repeatable, right? So we can have a repeatable sensor that tells us under the same conditions that we're at 0.55 lambda, and that's okay if it's repeatable, it's still useful, but it might not be accurate. In other words, the actual lambda in the exhaust may not be 0.55. It could be 0.62 or it could be 0.48. We don't know. As long as it's repeatable, it's useful. But this sensor is meant to give us both repeatability and accuracy. And that's why we wanna, we're interested in trying it on that nitromethane uh, Harley. So I think that's, Probably about as much damage as I can do and as far as I can screw this whole thing up this whole uh, Box comes with a little lambda bung if you don't have one and also a, a plug to be able to plug the hole So you can weld that on your exhaust pipe. If you don't have one already obviously uh, instruction manual here uh, on how the uh, how the device functions and what else have we got? Oh, we've got a tuning manual Okay, and this this is kind of cool because it shows what the display would look like it's a little red LED display obviously displaying it looks like maybe gasoline air fuel ratio. In this case, we'll probably program the display lambda since that means the most to me. And then obviously the output table will be in lambda going into the ECU and we'll be able to log the lambda on both the front and the rear cylinder. So this is a little bit of an experiment, at least for me. Uh, I'm gonna try it on the dyno and uh, we'll report back on how that works. And uh, meanwhile, if you are interested in one of these, you can get in touch with me via email, shanetech at yahoo.com. That's S-H-A-N-E-T-E-C-K at yahoo.com. Uh, or you can, uh, uh, I guess you can call me or send me a text, 714-318-5845. You can hit me up on Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram, at Tuned by Shane T, all of those things. If you're interested in talking about one, we can discuss it. I will be testing it soon on the dyno and we'll have results. I know other guys uh, have used this already and verified that it for sure functions into the MoTeC. And of course, James assured me that that's the case too. And uh, since he never ever tells lies, I, I trust him. Uh, and so, yeah, um, air fuel ratio, right. So the air fuel ratio, specific uh, stoichiometric air fuel ratio is based on the content of the fuel and uh, uh, the different fuels have different air fuel ratio stoichiometric values. It's a chemically correct value to completely combust all the fuel or completely react all of the all of the fuel. Uh, so nitromethane stoic is 1.7 to 1 air fuel ratio, 
right? So 1.7 pounds of air are required to, to completely combust one pound of liquid nitromethane. Uh, the problem comes into play when you mix two fuels together, like you do when you run ethanol and E85 and gasoline, or uh, methanol and nitromethane. A methanol stoichiometric air fuel ratio is about 6.47 to 1. So depending on the mixture percentage by mass, uh, you have a varying, a sort of floating stoichiometric number. And the problem with that is that to tune that, it doesn't mean a whole lot. You know, for example, if I tell you that I'm running 1.5 to 1, you know that's richer than 1.7, but you don't really know in your head to the extent that that's richer because you don't know what the mixture stoic number is, right? If we're running 100% nitromethane, then 1.5 versus 1.7 would be a richer number. But if we're running some mixture of methanol that's a combination of 1.7 and 6.47, depending on the percentage by mass of the two, 1.5 might not mean a whole lot, particularly if the stoic number is actually 1.3, though in that case we're lean. And we, that's why lambda makes more sense when you're tuning with fuels that have a, a combination of two different fuels mixed together. Because lambda doesn't care what the air fuel ratio is, right? It's simply a oxygen percentage left over if you want or lack of it compared to what atmosphere is. And in that way, if you're running, say, 0.75 lambda, you are the same percentage richer than whatever stoic is for the fuel you're trying to run. So if you vary the nitro and alcohol percentage and the stoic number moves around, you don't have to keep track of that number. Uh, the, the lambda number at 7.5 still tells you, hey, you're in the same place as far as how much richer than stoic you are. So that's your little quick... Uh, quick and dirty unboxing video on the uh, Ballinger Motorsports AFR 500 can. Uh, I will plug this thing in later and make it work with the ECU and make sure I don't look like a dumbass any more than normal when I go to the dyno to try and make it work. And uh, yeah, I think that's all, the, uh, that's all the damage I can do for today. So there's your quick and dirty Lambda explanation. Probably not super accurate. Just trying to get the point across. There's lots of other videos you can watch for that. And uh, yeah. Give me a like, give me a follow, give me a share if you like it. Thank you for joining in. Talk to you soon.